Hello and thanks for joining me again this week. Earlier in the week, I joined county leaders from across the country to hear President Joe Biden speak, and I was delighted to hear him highlight Montgomery County and how we've created a model to be followed when it comes to our efforts to electrify our public transit buses. Last fall, when we opened the Brookfield Smart Energy Bus Depot, we received national attention. So far, the microgrid electric bus charging station has allowed us to operate four electric ride-on buses with 10 more soon to be delivered. We've also put out an RFP to purchase another 100 electric ride-on buses. And we've been working with the school system to support their efforts to electrify their school bus fleet. The schools plan to replace 326 diesel buses with electric buses by 2025, and they will have an entirely electric fleet within the next 10 years. The president amplified our message that action at the local level can make a difference. Counties can figure out the financing, find the partners, and move forward on reducing greenhouse emissions. He recognizes that local actions can be important environmental wins for the nation. Electrifying our bus fleet is only one of many actions we're taking to achieve our climate action plan goals of an 80% carbon emission reduction by 2027 and 100% by 2035. We have plenty of reasons to be proud of our environmental record in Montgomery County. Our other accomplishments include work done by the Montgomery County Green Bank on a 2.1 megawatt solar project at Seneca Village Apartments in Gaithersburg. This project will serve more than 680 units and is located in an equity emphasis area. A six megawatt solar panel project at the Oaks Landfill is nearly complete. There's another microgrid project at the Animal Shelter and MCPS is working to add eight solar panel projects on its properties. The newly formed Building Performance Improvement Board is working on new recommendations for carbon reduction, and there are also efforts on the way to plant thousands of trees and improve water quality in our area. I want to thank our climate change officer, Adriana Hotchberg, for her work this week at the National Association of Counties Conference. She was on a panel that focused on energy and climate changes measures that could be tied into the President's Inflation Reduction Act. I'm really proud of how our county has become an example of how to incorporate action on climate change as part of our core values and policies. It's been nearly a year since a human error caused an explosion at the Friendly Gardens apartments in Silver Spring. 14 people were injured and more than 150 people were impacted. Nearly $500,000 in donations was given by our community and others to help the victims. The explosion was ultimately found to be accidental, caused by a contractor who mistakenly cut a gas pipe instead of a water pipe. Once that was discovered, I instructed my staff to work with our colleagues at WSSC Water to see what could be done to prevent a similar tragedy. This week, WSSC Water leaders adopted new gas code language that mandates the marking of any new gas pipe to prevent incidents like this in the future. I'm glad this change is being made because while we cannot enact laws to eliminate accidents, we're gonna do everything we can to prevent dangerous situations that threaten lives and destroy homes. I wanna thank the WSSC for their collaboration and urgency in adopting this new code, and I'm committed to doing everything we can to make further progress in this area. I'm pleased to have partnered with Councilmember Gabe Albernos to improve the lives of developing disabled and their families. This new bill would establish the Intellectual Development Disabilities, or IDD, Commission in Montgomery County. This would help identify the unique needs of people with IDD, foster dialogue, and improve information sharing with parents and caregivers, and help state and county government understand and meet the needs of the special population. As the parent of an adult foster child with an IDD, I know how difficult it can be to find and access services. It's a frustration many other families share too. Establishing this commission will help meet the needs of the special population and support their caregivers. Friday is National Caregivers Day, and I want to acknowledge all the people who are assisting a family member or a friend. Caregiving is hard work, but those of us who assume this role do it with love. There are many adults living with disorders like autism that rely on both family and the support they get from groups like Madison House Autism Foundation and the Jubilee Association of Maryland. In the county, we launched the Leap for MCG program to help those with disabilities find the right kind of job for them. We are proud of these efforts and the community groups that play such an integral role 
for so many in our community. This week we celebrated Valentine's Day and we were met with a dose of scary statistics from the CDC about the state of teenage girls in our nation. They clearly show we need to do a lot more to address the violence and abuse that far too many young women as well as adult women experience in our communities, here and across the country. We need a zero tolerance approach to righting this injustice. The following statistics are disturbing. Studies found that nearly one in three high school girls reported in 2021 that they seriously considered suicide. That's up 60% from a similar survey 10 years ago. Three in five teenage girls reported feeling sad so often that it impacted everyday life. There were also twice as many girls feeling that way as compared to boys. Other disturbing statistics include 15% of teen girls said they were forced to have sex. This is the first time the CDC has seen a rise in girls reporting forced sex since they began tracking it. One in 10 girls reported being raped, which is also the highest level the CDC has ever recorded. And in Maryland, no exception, one in 10 high school students reported experiencing physical or sexual dating violence. These numbers are alarming. Our teenage girls, as well as boys and those who do not gender identify, are impacted by these stresses and traumas, which can lead to alcohol and drug abuse or self-harm. February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month in the county, and earlier this week, I joined the county council along with MCPS, the Family Justice Center, County Commission for Women, the Domestic Violence and Coordinating Council, and the Maryland Department of Parole and Probation for a proclamation ceremony to talk about these issues. We are also raising awareness about teen dating violence through the end of February by lighting Veterans Plaza Orange each night. The Domestic Violence Coordinating Council is also behind the Choose Respect Montgomery Initiative which is teaching teens, parents, and others about healthy and unhealthy relationships, warning signs, and how to help a friend, and more. They also created events like Respect Fest and organized the Choose Respect video contest to reach thousands of teens and families in Montgomery County. This prevention initiative offers awareness and education programs for teens through videos and public service campaigns. Right now, the group is asking students to submit their own public service announcement videos for Respect Fest this coming April. Last year, there were 346 entries and more than 500 students had a hand in putting those videos together. We know that the most influential communicators to teens are other teens. I hope these peer-to-peer -peer messages help to highlight the warning signs and deliver messages so that students recognize that they're never alone and that there are people here to help. As a government, we must continue to support, expand, and routinely communicate about the resources we provide as the government, such as the Family Justice Center and the Crisis Center, as well as our nonprofit partners. As a parent and grandparent myself, I understand how tough these subjects can be to talk about with kids, but even worse is doing nothing. Teenage girls must hear loudly and clearly that they are not alone and that they have our support. We need to remember the impact of abuse on a young person can last a lifetime. We need to do whatever we can to prevent that. An approximate 10,000 laptops meant for low-income families without a home computer will be distributed through the end of April by Montgomery Connects, the county's digital equity and inclusion program. For the last year, community organizations have been referring their clients who qualify for the program for a free computer and reduced prices on home internet. There have also been many families participating that pick up locations have been scheduled all over the county. As of February 13th, the program has distributed 40,113 computers. 84% of the recipients have an annual household income of less than $50,000. And 35% have an annual income of less than $25,000. More than three out of every four computers has gone to black or Latino residents with 65% distributed to Black and Latino residents and households earning less than $50,000 annually. A few months ago, I joined Congressman David Trohn at one of these computer distribution events. Both of us are very proud of the impact this will make. I'm certain that this program will help put every student in our county on a level playing field. It will also help job seekers and anyone looking to continue their education. I know that in some cases we've been able to get families with multiple needs more than one computer. 
to see if you qualify for a free laptop before the grant funding for the program expires, please log on to our website, montgomerycountymd.gov slash OBP slash computer dash four dash U. There are good signs this week in our community health update. When looking over case rates and hospital beds devoted to COVID-19 patients, we see that both are lower than last week's metrics and our community level status remains low. The only demographic that remains a serious concern is older residents. They account for a lion's share of the more than 100 people who've been hospitalized fighting COVID. The best way to stay out of the hospital is to be up to date on your vaccines and bivalent boosters. But we continue to see fewer people each week getting their shots. We're down to less than 3,000 booster shots distributed per week in Montgomery County. In October, the county averaged 25,000 a week. Within the next few months, our county is likely to lose COVID-19 overflow hospital space that was opened in response to the pandemic. It allowed us to manage the quick rise in RSV and flu cases a few months ago and keep bed spaces open for the rise in COVID cases this past December. We still saw a strain on our resources. Our hospitals just are not equipped to deal with the massive amount of people who have had to be hospitalized. It's up to us to protect ourselves, our families, and our communities by spreading the word that boosters and vaccines are effective and remain necessary. Moving to other health concerns, two fentanyl awareness forums have been set up to close out February. The first will be next Tuesday, the 21st, for Spanish speakers. It will be virtual and we encourage everyone to sign up early through Montgomery County and Espanol Facebook page. The second community forum was just announced by Montgomery County Public Schools and the group Montgomery Goes Purple. It will be a hybrid event on Saturday, February 25th. The in-person portion of that meeting will be at Northwood High School starting at 9.30 a.m. That's a wrap for today. I hope you have a great week and a great weekend, and we'll be back again next week.